Which high-end gear do you regret selling? Wow, we're getting personal now, huh? <laughs> Henrik in Sweden wants to know, and he says, Paul, have you ever sold gear that you owned and then regretted selling it? Or do you have any that you'll never sell? For me, I have two, my tube preamp and a little Dynaco ST35. The preamp was what started my way to uh, being a, a hi-fi guy. The first time I stepped into a hi-fi shop, I still remember it, that was back in 1983. What I heard was so sweet sounding, I'd never heard anything like it. So I put an order in and I waited two years to get it. And what a sound, I still have it and I will never sell it. <clears throat> yes, there are better sounding um, speakers, but the price is so high, it's not worth the money. So, Paul, do you have something you like that you will never sell? And what have you sold that you regret? I would have to say the, th the two things that I regret selling were both preamplifiers. One was the Audio Research SP3A4. That was the one <clears throat> that Stan and I worked so, it was a tu vacuum tubes, of course. We worked so hard to beat that sucker. W we never did. W I mean, yeah, we beat it in terms of bass. We beat it in terms of accuracy of the RAAA curve. But for the sweetness, for the lush, mid-range, just big, I mean, instrument, everything, uh, we're, we're just fat and juicy and wonderful sounding. And ours, we got close, but it was always a little lean. And I remember just after, oh, I don't know, two years of doing our best to try and do that, we, we had come up with a great preamp and it set the company on its road. I, I'm certainly not ashamed of our preamp and what we came up with, but we never did get that same sound that that preamp had. And the other one was the Quintessence. So Quintessence was a small company out of, I think, San Francisco, some aerospace guys maybe, or computer guys. And they made the most gorgeous solid state phono preamplifier ever. And I actually owned one of those for a while. It was beautifully built, kind of gold anodized, gorgeous knobs. I mean, it was a fine preamplifier. Now, we actually did wind up beating its sound, but still, there's a place in my heart for the Quintessence and absolutely for the Audio Research SP3. Oh, what, what a killer phono stage uh, and, and preamp. So those are the two that, that I kind of regret selling. Not so much. I, I, I can go out and buy either one of them today. But, you know, I think I've told this story before. The things that we lust for at a certain age, like uh, those, those things were really interesting to us back then. But, you know, and, and, and the memory is still there. But 30 years later, 40 years later, you, while the memory is still there, if you were to go back and look at them and listen to them, you'd go, oh, well, that was great for the time, but I've done far better. And, and one of the great examples I had is, is my cousin Don, Don Brown. Don Brown was a cool guy, cool ladies guy. And back when I was, was 16, 17 years old, Don Brown had the first Corvette Stingray, a 60, was a 63 split window. It was one of the first in, in Los Angeles to ever show up. It was this kind of bronzy gold color. And that was the coolest car on the planet, bar none. Chick magnet, I mean, everything you could want in a car. And Don Brown owned that thing. And he'd take me in rides and I'd know when I'd, I'd come home from school or something and my cousin was there, oh my gosh. And I always wanted that car. Well, I actually got, years later, got a ride in it. And I thought, oh, this is horrible. It rides like a Chevy truck. You know, <laughs> I mean, come on, it's a 63 car, right? For the time, it was amazing. At today, mm, not so much. <laughs> so while I still love the thing, and yeah, it would be cool. I think I've, said, I've told this story before. There's a company in Kansas, 
I think it's Kansas, anyway, somewhere out in Kansas, that if you had more money than cents, you could go out and buy a brand new Corvette, which is a really nice car if that's what you wanted, uh, and, or even a, 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 my Tesla. I mean, I, but they, they do it on, on uh, you buy a brand new Corvette, they take the, the body off and they build you a 63 split window body that goes over the new Corvette. So you're driving a, a, a decent car, but it looks like this old one and you get all your thrills. Ah, that's, you know, it's, it's like $100,000 plus the car. <laughs> I ain't that much into cars. I got my little Tesla and I drive that around. I'm happy boy. But anyway, so no, I, I, no, I'm here I am rambling again, sorry. Um, and I don't think I would ever sell the Infiniti IRS 5s. Yes, we can do better. Yes, we will do better. And we'll have those as well. But there's a soft spot in my heart. So never say never. But as I sit here right now, that's, that's what I would do. Anyway, thanks for the question. And uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you.